Hi, my name is Addie Nolan, and I'm a graduate student in Professor Ife Mo's group in the Department of Materials Science and Engineering at the University of Maryland College Park. Welcome to my talk entitled Solid State Chemistries Stable with High Energy Cathodes for Lithium Ion Batteries. Lithium ion is ubiquitous in most of our portable electronic devices, and it's becoming increasingly important in electric vehicles. However, we've seen from, for example, the Samsung Galaxy Note recall that lithium ion has safety issues. And this safety issue is generally due to the flammability of the liquid organic electrolyte. If we're able to replace that liquid electrolyte with a solid electrolyte, which is an inorganic material that's non-flammable but can conduct lithium ions, we can create an all solid state battery that has improved safety and energy density over liquid electrolyte based batteries. Another reason for studying lithium ion is to improve the energy density. For example, if we're able to enable some of these high voltage cathode materials, we can improve the energy density of the battery. For example, enable greater driving range for our electric vehicles. And the focus of my talk is going to be on how to improve the stability with high voltage cathodes. So if our electrolyte is in contact with an extremely oxidative material, such as a delithiated high voltage cathode, Oftentimes that can create a reaction between the electrolyte and the cathode that can oxidize the electrolyte. And this oxidation can create decomposition products, which then cause our battery to be unable to move lithium ions back and forth and failure of the battery. We've actually seen how to solve this problem in one way by coating the cathode. So if we include a coating layer on the cathode that's non-reactive or has a limited reaction that we know and can control, we can enable stable cycling of the cathode with the other components of the battery. And this also works with liquid electrolytes as well. The focus of my talk was to understand what coating layers are available to us. What solid state chemistries will be stable with the cathode under high voltage cycling? And to answer this question, I looked at the stability of a lot of different materials with coating layers using a thermodynamic analysis of phase diagrams as generated by computational data of materials. And I'll show you an example using lithium cobalt oxide. I have here two particles of lithium cobalt oxide, which is a cathode material, lithiated and delithiated LCO. And this represents the composition of the cathode throughout its cycling voltage. If we look at the stability of LCO using that phase diagram method with LiPO3, we see that they're not stable in contact and there'll be an exothermic uh, favorable reaction energy when these two materials decompose to a lower energy set of phase equilibria. The same story is true for delithiated LCO. If we put together delithiated LCO and LiPO3, there will also be a reaction to form more stable phase equilibria which in our case is bad because it indicates that there's decomposition happening. So LiPO3 would probably be a poor coating to use for lithium cobalt oxide because it would react throughout the cycling composition of the cathode. However, if we looked at a different phosphate, Li3PO4, we see that this phosphate is actually stable with LCO and delithiated LCO. So this material would be useful as a coating layer because it's stable throughout the cycling with its charge of the cathode. So as you can see, this method is actually a very convenient way to look at a few coating layer materials and their stability with the cathode. But if we wanted to look at the stability of many different coating layers, we would need a different form of visualization. To solve this problem, I took the minimum reaction energies of these reactions, which represent the greatest thermodynamic driving force, and I encoded these energies into a heat map. The darker the color of the heat map, the more reactive the material pairing is, and then the lightest color indicates no reaction at all. And I repeated this calculation for many different coating layer candidate materials to try to understand what is the difference in the reactivity of the lithiated and delithiated cathodes, and then what materials are stable overall with the cathode under cycling. So here's an example of the heat map that I obtained for the reaction of cathodes with the lithium ternary oxide materials. The cathodes are on the x-axis. I looked at lithium cobalt oxide and delithiated lithium cobalt oxide, layered lithium nickel oxide, and then high voltage lithium manganese nickel spinel and lithium cobalt phosphate. And these are all the lithiated and delithiated compositions. 
And then on the y-axis, we have different coating layer compositions. Again, these are the lithium ternary materials, which means there's a lithium, a cation M, and then an oxygen. What we found in general, just looking broadly at this diagram, was that the high voltage cathodes on the right tended to be more reactive with the lithium ternary materials than, than the layered oxides. And it was extremely difficult to find coatings that were stable throughout the cycling state of charge of these high voltage cathodes. One of the trends that we found was that the lithium content of the coating layer influences its reactivity with a cathode. So if we look at a subset of the materials, they're all organized by lithium content. And if we just look at the layered oxides, we see that for the layered cathodes, as the lithium content of the coating layer increases, the delithiated cathodes are less stable, but the lithiated cathodes are more stable. And then if we look at just the high voltage cathodes, we see that all the cathodes become less stable as we have increasing lithium content of the coating layer. So this was a great find for us because it indicated that the cathode stability is highly dependent on whether the chemical potential of the lithium and the cathode match. So in general, whether the cathode coating layer matches the lithiation of the cathode. Because those high voltage cathodes tend to be less stable with extremely lithiated materials, we next looked at binary oxides which have no lithium in them. And we found in general that the binary oxides tended to have the most reactive binary oxides tended to be the alkali metal oxides. And we also found in several cases, good agreement with the literature on our predictions. Several materials that have been shown in the literature to be good cathode coating layers were also captured by our analysis. These materials all have good stability with the lithiated and delithiated state uh, for lithium cobalt oxide. And they've also been shown to be good cathode coating layers. We also found some that were used as coating layers for the high voltage lithium manganese nickel spinel. This was welcome news to us because it meant that our calculation was accurate in capturing these materials that have been found in the literature before, and also that could potentially be predictive so that we could actually use this analysis to find new coating layers for high voltage cathodes. Next, we looked at the lithium quaternary materials, which haven't been studied as much as for coating layers. Our biggest surprise here was that the lithium quaternary phosphates tended to be more stable with the high voltage cathodes. Finally, we looked at the lithium ternary fluorides, which have the highest anonic limits of all the coating layers studied. So we would expect them to also have good stability with the high voltage cathodes. And they do, they tend to be pretty stable with most of the high voltage cathodes. And this was also a good check for us since we've known for a while that fluorination of the cathode can improve its oxidative stability. Here's a summary of my results. Thank you so much for listening.